In this week's Technique Tuesday video, it's all about ribbing, how it works, why the stitches are larger than stockinette, and how to modify a project to create a particular ribbed effect. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. I knit these, these six swatches using three different needle sizes. In these three swatches, I have knit one pearl one ribbing, followed by some stockinette. And in all cases, I used a US size six needle for the stockinette, that's a four millimeter uh, needle. And then for the ribbing, I used a US four, a US five, and a US six. So this swatch was completely knit with a US six needle, while these were knit with two different needle sizes each. Now I did the same thing for these three swatches, which have knit two pearl two ribbing. Again, this one was knit completely on a size six needle. This one had the ribbing on a size five uh, with the stockinette in a six. This was a size four with the stockinette in the six. Stockinette fabric has a tendency to roll. You'll see here at the bind off edge, and this would be true at a cast on edge as well, that the fabric wants to roll toward the knit side. If we keep this edge um, straight, then what we would see is that the in this, if this were a longer fabric, then these edges would want to roll toward the pearl side. But with ribbing, that is not the case. It lies flat. Another quality that ribbing has is that it's reversible. It looks the same. Knit two, purl two looks the same on both sides of the fabric, and knit one, purl one looks the same on both sides of the fabric. The other quality that ribbing has is that it contracts. It's elastic, so it will pull in, but it will easily stretch as you are pulling a, a garment on over different body parts that are, that are shaped differently, then the ribbing will stretch to accommodate it. So the qualities that ribbing have make it ideal for garments that are made primarily of stockinette because of the, the problems that stockinette has with uh, rolling in both directions, vertically and horizontally. Ribbing is often used at the borders because it will lie flat, but also because it will hold snugly. So I mentioned that these swatches, that the ribbing in these swatches were all knit on different size needles. And that is something that is commonly done. Sometimes a pattern will call for using the same size needle for both the ribbing and the body of the garment, but often they'll call for using a needle one size smaller or two sizes smaller. Occasionally you'll see some, see a pattern that will call for uh, even smaller needle relative to what's used for the main body. So why is that? So let's look at this, this swatch that was knit entirely on a size six needle. And what you'll see is that the knits, the, the rib stitches are enormous compared to the stockinette stitches. They're just way larger than they are. And these were knit on the same size needle. And with the ribbing, you will see that it is pulling in a little bit, but not really that much. With the needle that's a size smaller, the rib, the rib stitches are still larger, but they're not quite as large as they are when we use the same size needle. And then when we go down two sizes, still with Knit One Pro One ribbing, they're larger, but they're not quite as large. And this is a, a firmer ribbing than you get when you use the same uh, needle size. This is just a, 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 firmer, a firmer ribbing that will maybe hold. And this one is pulling in a little bit more than, than the largest one, but, but not a whole lot. If we put them on top of each other, you can see it's a little bit narrower uh, than the largest one. So let's look at the knit two, purl two. Uh, first thing that we notice is that these stitches are just not as large as knit one, purl one ribbing. The ribbing worked on size six is still larger than um, the stockinette. The size five is a little bit closer. And then what you'll see with the size four ribbing, it, the stitches are actually very close in size compared to the stockinette fabric. And that is one reason why patterns will call for using a smaller needle size, and that is to maintain the size of the, of the stitches as you transition from one stitch pattern to another. That's one reason. And the other reason is to get 
simply a little bit firmer fabric and those places where that need to be stretched or that or want to be pulled in a little bit. Well, let's take a look at what happens when you switch between a knit stitch and a purl stitch or between a purl stitch and a knit stitch. When we look at stitches on the needle, they tend to have a certain amount of space between you. And these, the stitches that are on the needle are not any type of stitch yet. They are potential stitches. It's, it's the stitches below the needle that we want to actually look at. We can see there's a purl bump here. And then here we can see we have a knit stitch. And look at this thread that's connecting the two of them. That's the running thread between the two stitches. And what you'll see is that as it's coming out of the purl stitch, it's coming out the front. Then it has to go to the back of the work. And that's where this stitch is coming in, is formed through the back of, of this stitch. And the one that's on this needle here is formed coming through the front. So let me show you a little more closely. So this is a knit stitch. Now I want to purl. I have to move that yarn to the front in order to pull that loop through. So this stitch is formed by pulling yarn from the front through that loop. And so this running thread right here is, is coming from the back of this stitch and then through the front of this one. So that is a longer path than if I just did another purl stitch right in a row, then these two are both just right next to each other. So how do knits and purls interact with each other on, in fabric? When we have ribbing, we have these columns of knit stitches uh, next to columns of purl stitches. The knit stitches, when we have columns, come forward and the purls go backwards. But when we have rows of knits and rows of purls, the opposite happens. The purls come forward and the rows of knits recede. So when these stitches are just sitting on the needle, they're spaced further apart from each other. And when we form the new stitches, we get that longer running thread between the two stitches than we get if the two stitches were identical to each other. But once all of these stitches come off the needle and they're allowed to just relax and be themselves, the knits come forward, the purls go back, and then they're sitting right next to each other and it pulls the fabric in so that the extra slack that you had between those two stitches, not only does it go away, it goes away even more because of the way the stitch come, the knits come forward and the purls go back and that extra slack goes into the stitches which causes them to enlarge. Because you're switching every stitch with knit one, purl one ribbing, there's more of that excess slack that gets pulled into each stitch. Whereas with a knit two, purl two, you're alternating between working two stitches that are exactly alike and then switching from a knit to a purl or a purl to a knit. So there just isn't as much slack to uh, be absorbed into stitches. It's about half as much slack. So for something like a hat or a pair of mittens, often you will be instructed to use the same needle size for both, but sometimes you won't. And one reason you might be instructed to use the same size needle for both is uh, if it's a, a more of a beginner pattern, and the idea is to just focus on getting the project done and not worrying so much about having to switch needle sizes and having to use so many different needles. There's another reason why you might want to use the same needle size for both. Let's say you're knitting a sweater and you have a sweater body that you, it's got some, a little bit of ease, it's a little bigger around than you are and you want it to be loose. And at the bottom, you want the ribbing to just hang down straight. You don't want it to pull in. In that case, you might want to use the same needle size and you might want to use knit one, purl one ribbing because it's not going to pull in as much and the stitches are larger and it's just, you're gonna, it's, it's an easy way to get that sort of continuity of a between the stockinette portion and the ribbing portion without having to change needle sizes and without having to change stitch counts either. On the other hand, when I learned to knit in the 80s, it was more common to have a little bit, not only a little bit more ease in the body, but also there was often a difference in stitch count between the ribbing 
and the body you might have 10 15 percent fewer stitches um, for the body because what we wanted is for this waistband to be right around where say your belt was so on your waist um, there and you wanted it to be snug and you wanted then to have a little bit more ease in the body so in this case you would have more uh, stitches for the body than you would for the ribbing and often you would still go down needle sizes just to make it pull in a little bit more and these days we're seeing the blouse arms now in in fashion where uh, you might you might want to have a firmer a ribbing here and maybe you want to use knit to purl to in addition so this is something to think about if you find a, a pattern that you really like but you want to change the style a little bit at that transition between the stockinette and the ribbing to get a different effect than what it was originally designed to have you can do this kind of thing where you can play with which type of ribbing uh, and, and what needle size but you can also play with the stitch count now you can get this kind Kind of effect as well even if you are using a smaller needle and say knit to purl to ribbing uh, you can get this effect but you're going to have to do something a little different and you might you might want to use knit to purl to ribbing with a smaller needle because you just like the aesthetic of the ribbing where the stitches look the same um, going from the ribbing to the body so in this case instead of increasing stitches for the body you would increase stitches in the ribbing you'd have more stitches in the ribbing than you would in the body in order to maintain that even a uh, vertical line of the of the sweater or the sleeve or whatever it is that you're trying to do so how do you figure this kind of thing out so in this scenario i would start with what stitch count do you need to achieve this width in the stockinette fabric and then i would do a swatch with the ribbing and I would match up. I'd say when this ribbing is relaxed as you want it to be when it's hanging down here, how many rib stitches are in four inches versus how many stitches are in the stockinette in four inches. So let's say you had uh, 20 stitches here, but you had 24 stitches here, then you would know that when you transition from the ribbing to the stockinette, if you're working bottom up or if you, or from the stockinette to the ribbing, if you're working bottom down, that for every um, four stitches here, you have five stitches here. So you would have five stitches, you would decrease five stitches down to four, or you would increase four stitches up to five in order to get um, that that uh, continuity in the width of the fabric. In this kind of scenario, what I would do is I would take the measurement of this body part that you want with no ease as if it were in stockinette. So let's say you have a 10 inch wrist or something, you and you want that ribbing to, to fit around the 10 inches, I would figure out how many stockinette stitches were in 10 inches based on my gauge and then I would use a needle two sizes smaller to knit that ribbing and then you're going to increase to whatever you uh, uh, need to get the circumference of this stockinette here. I encourage you to experiment with different types of ribbings and needle sizes to see what you prefer. The more you understand about how knitting works, the more freedom you will have to get the results you want. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.